go, go. No. <laughs> I recently put the seconds counter on my uh, on my laptop clock. Ooh, and anxiety factor. Life, life <laughs> changing. <laughs> Streaming. There we go. Hey, live. Hello. We're hey. live. I see an advertisement. Right. Look at look, guys. Oh, advertisements. Ads. I see an ad on Twitch. Yeah, I see an ad too. I see a little <laughs> ad. You guys not stream. <laughs> Scaramus, Scaramus. Can you do the fandango? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Lightning, very, 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 very frightening. frightening. This is all going to cast here in a minute. Yeah. We're gonna get banned. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yo, all right, if they on. try to take royalties out of that, Queen, they, chill out. They will. They will take royalties. Take all of them. Mama's got student loans. Can't afford that shit. Okay, I can hear us. So we are going. Yeah. All right. Hey. All right. Hello. This. Hold on. I need to do something. Anyway, I'll do that in a minute. I have no idea if anyone's listening. It's okay. I feel like people <laughs> tune in because they like the idea that we try to stick to a structure, but yet we always deviate. We're from. very bad about sticking to a structure. We have uh, <laughs> a lot of problems uh, <laughs> being ourselves and, you know, all that. We are, we, listen, we just, we take the initiative uh, to, oh. uh, uh, oh, to figure it out. Well, beautiful. All right. So welcome to Talking Initiative episode two. Uh, we're going to discuss the first two episodes of Behind Civil yeah. Eyes, which is Bucky whoops, stealing... Whoops, 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 oh, no, Morgan has gone into a loop. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to take a slide. <laughs> I keep trying to slide it places it will go away. Just lower okay, your Okay, all right, all right. I'm sorry. That was okay. such a good intro. That was so well <laughs> it was solid. Oh, you didn't God. love any words. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Bucky stole the show for Behind Civil Eyes, so we're going to let Bucky talk about it for exactly 28 minutes now well why don't we like introduce ourselves and oh shit? my god fine i mean if they're tuning in i must i hope they know who i they hope are. so but okay fine uh we have i Josh, hope you know the who DM. i am we I have hi uh, yes say hello do your thing hello Oh, uh, I'm, I'm Josh Perot. I'm the DM for this current campaign. Everyone hates me. There you go. Just like an adult. Cool. We also have Bucky as Vindelar uh, Greymeyer. No, I play Sailor Moon. Okay. I mean, yeah, that's, <laughs> wow. that's not entirely wrong. Uh, we have Nicholas Figueroa, who plays... Kent Brickwood of the East Farthing Brickwood. I just wanted to hear the whole you? thing. <laughs> and also, there's me. I don't care about me. We have a new cast member. It's Morgan. <laughs> Honestly, I can't keep track of who you play, so please go to Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's entirely fair. All right. Um, this is Drew. He has a rotation. <laughs> I've got um, a revolving door of characters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm new, and I'm very excited to be here for the first time because I've been recording for months and had to be quiet about it. But <laughs> now I'm here, and you guys know who I am, and I feel great. Validated. 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 Even though none of y'all asked a specific question about me which is fine my ego will recover <laughs> i'm gonna go with the fact but that i will remember this here i huh? thought that, I, I think you that know. that maybe maybe the listeners thought that you would not be in this talk initiative M that's maybe why i'm just saying that we did say on the i Discord think that the and listeners and on the Twitch, i just think that the listeners are probably it. like morgan no don't join this group of idiots <laughs> run away while you can you still have time <laughs> that is it's true. fine listen i realized that i came in at a time where vendelier grimmer became every 14 year old furry weebs dream boat and that <laughs> stole the show in a massive way. I honestly think that jo John's uh, Twitter handle should be a furry weaves dream boat. You know, Please. I fully agree with that. Put that. Can we, can we, Drew, can I we know. make that a poll on Twitter? Can we make that a poll on Twitter? I will make it a poll on Twitter. Good. I will do it um, right now, in fact. So I realize that I'm new, but there's other stuff that happened this episode. One or two things that maybe, you know, stole some limelight. Few things. Just a few things. Yeah. Few things. Um, just, uh, it's a few things. But how do, how do we even, how do we even things. start about all this? Because it was okay. a lot. I have a, I have a serious question. Okay. Right? So Nick. we've, we've been calling these, uh, these arcs. Uh, just different kind of puns, mm -hmm. and what is the what is the meaning behind behind these silver eyes? 
because if it's, Kelly, if it's Kelly Clarkson behind these hazel eyes, <laughs> I am going to be so proud. <laughs> it was not that. John, you're the one behind these silver eyes. Behind every silver time, eyes is time. a play off of behind blue eyes. Uh, I figured, but yeah. I was hoping. I ah, like Kelly, Kelly Clarkson. Clarkson one better. No, new reality. It's behind his <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, we all agree it's I'm Kelly Clarkson. I'm just Clark. saying. There, guys, I the believe in the multiverse theory. Multiverse theory. And there is, theory. There, is a, there is a world where you guys thought Kelly Clarkson first. The level of melodrama that this arc entails says Kelly Clarkson every day of the week. Oh, I like how you think 100%. that John and I instantly knew a Kelly Clarkson. The thing song. is. Yeah, I look at you, lie about it, but and I say, "Secret Kelly Clarkson fan." I can see it in your. <laughs> it's in the beard. In my, it's in the beard. In my, in the beard. My, my oh. eyes, you can see. It. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, so, Bucky. Yes. Why don't you tell us about uh, episode twenty-seven? But I'm sure everyone wants to hear about episode twenty-eight the most. So twenty-seven was really the introduction of what was going to be Ven's story his it, it was everything that's been kind of sitting in the background the whole time um that has been slightly mentioned here and there which i've been doing on purpose of mentioning things but being intentionally vague because i knew this was eventually coming and i wanted it to be really a big thing that would lead up into like what ven's entire purpose was and what his whole what he's about and what he stands for so uh 27 was really just that introduction of like hey this is probably all about Ven because our scene is going through some weird trippy shit right now and leading us off to some manor where there's a giant dragon statue and things are creepy and weird. Um, and yeah, that was pretty much 27. We went in the house. We uh, had an introduction to a creepy, spooky dragon spirit that was in the house and that kept kind of avoiding us. And we were all like, hey, we're, we're like dead because we just ran away from a bunch of werewolves and almost died. So let's go to bed. And us being the smart people we are, decided to sleep in a haunted house that we just walked into. God, I mean, on the option, it's the best one. Yeah, I was going to say, is there a better place to sleep in Barovia? I'm pretty sure every building is haunted in some manner. Can I mean, I, probably inside was better than the outside. So. Can I just say that I am kind of bummed that Thor Ragnarok did not come out prior to that recording because it would have been great just to like chuck shit at the the fucking ghost. Fuck off, ghost! <laughs> <laughs> Piss off, ghost. Piss off, Piss ghost. Off, ghost. <laughs> Which is a good point to note that Ragnarok did not come out yet, so the voice you chose had nothing to do with Korg's character at all. He meant nothing. And then it came out, and you're like, oh, it was right there. Like that. <laughs> Actually, maybe the little bit better, because my New Zealand accent's a real crap one. <laughs> Korg made it better. Bit of pacing yeah. in it. Oh well, can't go and read the record. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> but I, I wasn't really the only thing that happened. I mean, we did meet Rosalie. We yes. met Rosalie. We, we met, met Rosalie me. and her amazingly tasty looking sandwich. Yeah, listen, it's the best way to to, to join a party is to be eating. <laughs> That's true. I just remember being so afraid to offend you because you were you were new to the group, and I was like, "Oh my god, please don't say anything stupid, Nick. Please, please." <laughs> and that, that you know, I one episode the podcast <laughs> before I got here. Right? She knew what she was getting in. <laughs> yeah, but some, she but came you, in prepared. A new person comes around. You want to put your best foot forward. Best behavior. Yeah, I don't want to just already first day. <laughs> have you hate me although the first recording session that we did all together you and i did do a duet of like a virgin together so really was a match yeah made in heaven, mm -hmm. after so. that i was like we good we good we good we good did we do that before we did into ivy mansion or we did it into ivy mansion first we did into wait for no, what? no we, we did, did into ivy mansion first because yes. that was morgan's yeah. first game mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. it was uh initially uh, Morgan's introduction into D and D. Yeah, yes. 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 yeah. Yes. I play Clementine. Clementine, <laughs> my tall paladin lady. Which you got to deal with Nick, Sebastian, Silver Tongue, Sebastian, Silver Tongue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the to your tongue is always out of your mouth when you say that. Mm, <laughs> it's, just, it's just something that I wanted to point out. And Morgan, Morgan is yeah. I, I just like okay. I just like playing eccentric and extreme characters. This is, is right there. 
Listen, like I said this the other night to you, but just to reiterate to all the three lovely people who are watching, Nick does best when he can bring enthusiasm to anything. Mm -hmm. And that's what he excels at. Yes. Like joie de vivre. If I played like the straight Like the salt guy. I feel like I'd be so bored. Mm -hmm. I need to play a little bit of a a weird character. (laughs) So what you're saying is it's all... It's all for the character. You're not just like this. No, not at all. Not at all. That's, it's I can just, vouch for that. I've seen you at work. I, I am actually the hero of my own story. I am a <laughs> knight in shining armor, if you will. Um, but yet, when I'm playing D&D, I like to deviate a little bit from my day-to-day mm-hmm. life. So mm-hmm. You like to let other people take the spotlight for like exactly. three, only three seconds at a time. Yes, of course. Um, especially because this whole talking initiative is about Bucky. And <laughs> uh, I'm sorry <laughs> that I'm talking so much. It's not all about me, Jesus. It's mostly about you. All right, Bucky. So why don't you tell us about episode 28? Because that's the one that everyone keeps... That's the episode everyone keeps freaking out about. So, yeah, this one was the big episode where um, a lot happened. And it was kind of funny. It started off with the dream. With Actually, uh, before, before we get into the dream, something happened. And I'm curious of your reaction for it, which is in 27 your heart started to uh, warm up when you started hearing the name Argonvoss. I know you, out of game, did not know what that meant. No. Where did you think that was going? Um, I thought that that possibly had something to do with the kinship between Argonvost and the dragon that uh, gave me the power to begin with. So I thought that was some sort of a remembrance or a tie into him remembering uh, Argon Vost and like their connection that they had and mm-hmm. them being friends essentially at some point. Yeah. Cool. Then you knew what exactly I what I was trying to convey. So that's okay, cool. cool. Yeah, that works. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, continue. Continue. I was just thinking curious. like, oh, so, shit, yeah. this is how Josh gets me. It's going to be a fucking cardiac arrest after yep, the stress no, happens. <laughs> Surprised they didn't have a cardiac arrest after that whole ordeal. Um, but yeah, then the dream happened, and that was officially in Ven's lifetime, the first interaction he really ever had, or the first time he ever really had a chance to s- sit down and speak with this entity that gave him this Pendragon power, um, which, funny enough, his name was Doskiln, which uh, I find it funny because Josh couldn't read the first five li- lines of my... Uh, 20 page backstory because I put a name for the dragon that gave me the power yep. in there and then I was like actually yours is better so that's fine I actively <laughs> looked for it too and I just did not find it with it was your, under the thing that said up. dragon patron right there at the top <laughs> yep but uh yeah I changed it to Das Kiln for obvious reasons of you know something fire related uh, but uh go on but yeah, um, that whole interaction was really, I thought that that was really cool and it played out really well where me and Josh just had a nice little back and forth. Um, and you really learned a lot about who Vin was, where he came from. You learned uh, the reasoning for why he named Arsene Arsene, it being the name of his mother, who uh, he had only met a couple times at that point because <laughs> mama gone. Um and then, yeah, we had that sweet little interaction and then woke up to meet none other, none other than Argon Vost himself, um, which led to a series of insanity, um, some spell deciphering, some ritual casting, and um, ultimately learning that uh, Ven and Arsene were meant to be one, were meant to be merged together into a living, breathing weapon. Um, which is what they are now. Um, so yeah, through the help of Ferguson and his uh, evil linguistics and my <laughs> draconic linguistics, I mean, you speak the evil languages, so. I speak languages. <laughs> he doesn't <laughs> discern them as evil or good or... Bucky, uh, can you, I'm going to do this, and if you put your arms up, over the this other way? side, we this can way? kind of do a merge thing. That's what I'm. It's like some sort of anime. Fusion. That's how it was. Fusion. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go take now. We nailed. We did it. Yeah. Um, On my screen. Oh, Steve, funny George, enough, I'm wearing a Steven Universe here, which is all about you guys, fusion. Not, you guys weren't touching at all. Oh, is it this way? Um, do we have to go that way? Yeah. There you go. Okay. Fusion. We fixed it. We Bucky, fixed Bucky, it. Bucky, put your arms up again. I'm doing it. There you go. No, no, Bucky, you go the other way. You're both going this way. Yeah. Yes. 
Oh, oh. it's all backwards, no. guys. Oh, my God. Good audio. Good audio. We did it. There you go. Oh, there you it. go. <laughs> anyway, as is ironic because I'm wearing a Steven Universe shirt and they're all about fusions and dancing and stuff. Mm-hmm, which is kind of cool. mm-hmm. um, uh, I thought that before I came here. I didn't. Um, so, yeah, then we did a whole ritual where uh, Ven and Arsene merged together and they became this like crazy draconic entity that has these really cool powers um, and can shift between both fire and ice abilities. Um, and then I got us all tipsy topsy turned around when I didn't listen to everything that Josh told me and took us in the wrong direction. Well, to be fair, Josh was talking for like 30 minutes. Yeah, it was a lot of talking. It was a lot of, a lot of development. There was a lot, a lot of, of stuff going on. Um, you should see that Reaper file. It's just Bucky and I, and then everyone else yeah. in like two chunks. Yeah, it's like, and everybody talks, and then it's just two waveforms that go along, and then everybody talks at the end. (laughs) What I really love about that, though, is that, like, Ferguson, Roz, and Kent have no idea what the fuck is happening. Not at all. Yeah, well, I want to know what you guys thought about this whole thing. Because none of us speak draconic, so we're basically just watching a giant dragon, a giant dragon ghost, (laughs) and then hiss at each other and then do a dance and then two becomes one spice girl style (laughs) and And become one sorry um (laughs) yeah nick and i that was all that was all clarified when me and josh were having this draconic talk and then i said i turned to the party and explained everything yeah (laughs) no no all the things okay okay (laughs) but you do explain it in this like are seen and I are meant to be together. And it's like, okay, there are laws that are probably against that. I'm just saying there might be probably some not in Barovia. Let's be, let's be honest. Barovia but like, doesn't care. Probably not. So, no. like, there's like a minimal exposure. But even like, are seen and I are meant to be together does not quite prepare a bitch for like <laughs> <laughs> what is about to happen. Yeah. Right? For like the weird, like, half. Like, listen, I'm all about, like, the fact that we've got, like, a genderqueer dragon person in our show now. But, like, it's a lot for a first day. <laughs> yeah. Ross just yeah. gets there and is like, I guess this is my fucking life now. This is normal. Uh, so, yeah, I really want to know what your guys' characters thought of what was happening with Vin. Have um, you have you seen that Veep gif where she's like oh what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah that's a good one yeah that's Honest, it honestly i um i'm gonna say in character at first uh kent doesn't know anything about magic really so uh he just assumed that you guys just like ran at each other and, and just like <laughs> Somehow fused into one. So uh, Kent's assuming if you just run fast enough at a person, you will fuse as well. <laughs> oh my god, he cannot wait to fuse with Ferguson. His head's gonna go right into Ferguson's junk, and it's just gonna be. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, no, gonna, at gonna, first they're gonna fuse. At first, I, I, I if you want to call it that, maybe need to have a sexual <laughs> education <laughs> talk. <laughs> Not be like, maybe there are other ways to do that. <laughs> um, Kent would kind of be a little bit upset because he um he was losing he was losing a friend our scene our scene and him had a different relationship than ven did you know ven was kind of like this uh older brother while our scene was a kind of it was more of a peer um and then i feel like towards the end of it where uh this new character explained that this is how it's always meant to be and you know he trusts both these characters individually and now together he trusts them probably even more he was just thinking, damn, this is going to be an even better wingman for him. Like, <laughs> this is, he's like, all right, well, you know, let's do, let's do this. this is gonna, he can, hey, look, my wingman can do this really cool trick and I'll talk you up. Kent's like, technically a tall woman. <laughs> <Technically>. <laughs> like, Emma, let's see where it goes. Let's see where it goes. Look, I have, before I get into what Ferguson thought about it, I have one important question. Uh-huh. When... Arsene and Vin switch control and their his face changes. Does his genitals change? Or hers? Or theirs? Do we need to get into that? I'm no, I just want to like, watch like Buffy's from, face as he thinks about it. I'm, I'm going from, like, to say bottom mystique kind of thing. I'm going to say for the purposes of this, 
Nobody would ever see Ven naked, so it cannot be clarified. Yeah. Hey, also, I thought we agreed about dragon pouches. Did we not agree about dragon pouches? I didn't he agree. does, in fact, have a pouch. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Cannon, oh, Jesus. Cannon, that's it, that's it. Pretty sure there was a Twitter poll, and what Twitter polls say goes. The Twitter poll says that everyone wants dragons with pouches. Anyway, uh, what Ferguson thought about it. Have you met Ferguson? I mean, after it happened, he was basically, he had his face in the book, looking through all them soul, all soul, soul knowledge. Yeah, but... I feel like Ferguson's like, well, that was some weird shit, and now we're moving on. <laughs> basically. <laughs> and if, now for if, something completely different. If Ferguson can't <laughs> drink it, fight it, or possibly fuck it, he doesn't really care. <laughs> listen, but he's... Show, but listen, you know Ken, what? That's a good life motto. He offered you a awesome. drink, so you got it in. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Ferguson is a very simple murder person. Murder person? That's super I mean, sexy. He's pretty much a murder hobo. It's, we're going full. We're going full hentai here. <laughs> how did you feel about this, Josh? Never go full hentai. As the DM uh, so from your mean. standpoint, how did you feel about all this? Uh, besides my voice being wrecked the next day from all yeah. that dragon talk, uh, it was good. Um, yeah, Greg Tito plug. There, you go, um, yeah. there we go. So I enjoyed how it went. Uh, some of it was just kind of on the fly running with it. And also the other part of it was trying to remember your novella uh, as I went. Um, <laughs> I read through your backstory probably a good four to five times, like within a few days before it, just to ingrain it in my head. Um, yep. But my concern with it was one, I didn't want the other party members or, or rather, you know, you guys as people to be bored as Bucky and I dipped into a very one-on-one -on -one session. Uh, so that was always in the back of my head the entire time. Uh, but also at the same time, this was John's moment as very much the last arc was Nick's moment for Kent. Mm -hmm. yep. So I was hoping that I would be able to do this and get through all this massive backstory and not have it feel too much like an exposition dump and have it feel more natural of like you would be learning this stuff as a player and as a character in as much of a natural way as possible. And the way that it ended, I feel that, you know, it went as well as it possibly could. Um, at some point in time, uh, I was having trouble remembering what I was even talking about. <laughs> um, mostly because like the stuff with Das Kiln, um, there's some stuff that he would know that is in your backstory that he wouldn't know, but Argon Voss would know the other stuff, and I need to yeah. differentiate between the two of those. Um, and I also didn't want to give you all of the details, uh, which th there is some stuff you still didn't learn uh, out of that, which I think you learned in later episodes. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, I, I enjoyed how it went. I asked you guys afterwards how you guys felt, as I tend to do with every game, and that's as a good DM note for people of uh, Gage, how your party is reacting to your game. Um, because if you don't know if they're having fun or if they're bored or if they want to do something else, uh, then you may not be engaging them as much as you want to. That's so, actually yeah. something that I really, really appreciate, Josh. Like, honestly, the we we record every uh, other Saturday. Sorry to peek behind the curtain too much. Um, but Monday, jo I see Josh at work, and honestly, it's the first thing. He's like, hey, how you doing? And how was this weekend? Did you enjoy <laughs> yourself? And I, I honestly appreciate, because you're running this game and you already come into the into the playing with okay i'm gonna cover this and i'm gonna do this um granted we may deviate whenever we want but you come into this trying to make sure that everyone has fun but also that the story progresses uh so i appreciate that if i was if i feel comfortable enough where on monday if i was to say hey i kind of was like falling asleep because i'm really tired and stuff like that i feel like the next time you would you would you know do a little do something a little different to yep. make sure that we are all just, feeling good about it. don't tell him that because i feel like if you tell him that the next game we're all gonna almost yeah, we're all gonna die. die we're all gonna die because mm -hmm. yeah. we've had some recent like, games oh, where it's been oh, like three o'clock sleeping? in the morning and i am like my heartbeat i'm like i'm the flight or fight response mm -hmm. and my heart's going a fucking mile a minute and i'm like it was, and Josh does not get the benefit of the doubt to wait on monday i'm texting his ass at three o'clock like ah! <laughs> i've got a lot of emotions to process <laughs> Uh, but 
Yeah, thank you, Nick. Uh, I yes, that's something I do try to do, and I text everybody usually after the game or the Slack and just go, "How did it go? What did you like? What didn't you like?" Uh, because that helps me guide uh, past that. But everyone's reaction from that episode and learning a lot about Ven, who tends to be a very mysterious character, um, I think it was good for everybody to feel that uh, the characters were important and the novella that we joke with Bucky about that's important to him um, mm -hmm. as, especially as an actor uh, or, you know, having all that acting training, um, being able to explore what you wrote and finally get to show that off, I think was very important to you. And I wanted to yeah. really hit that on the head. Um, and I know the transformation was incredibly important to you too. It's something we talked about, which we can talk about later when we get to the question. Yeah. Um, and, at the end of the day, as long as you were happy with how everything unfolded, I feel like I did my job correctly. And I think, uh, and the audience reaction, this is one of the most vocal audience reactions I've seen since the dream episode. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah people didn't like that episode. No. No, <laughs> no I remember, I think... uh, yeah. Well, I mean... A friend of mine texted me before the credits ended and he was like, what the hell, man? <laughs> Like, I think messed up. I'm like, yes, I texted messed you up. and I was like, Josh, buddy. And you were like, what's wrong? And I was like, this is <laughs> fucked. Um. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Uh, oops well, yeah. Sitting at a Starbucks at this day. Like... <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. Uh, I do actually appreciate the fact that like we were able to start delving into a little bit more of the backstory. Cause yeah, like a lot of my acting background, I use, that what I usually call a character chart to essentially be the reasons why Ven does the things he does and makes the decisions he does. So like finally allowing people to see this is what's been going on. This is this, this is the life that Ven lived beforehand. This is like the things he dealt with. And maybe it's a little bit more clarification for this is the reason why he acts the way he does. And the reason why he's, he's trusting, but he stays a little distant from people because he, he has been through a lot of ordeals in his life and he's not sure what's going to happen next. And he, he wants to be attached to people because he likes that sense of humanity and like being a friend to people, but he also doesn't know what's going to happen the next day or who he's going to lose or what's going to go on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also think it's really nice to do these character things because so much of Strahd has just sort of been reacting to shit, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah. Oh, here's one terrible thing after another and you're running and there's fighting. And then there's just one other terrible thing after another. So, and then more sadness, and then, and then there's just sadness yes. and then there's sadness. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So what I, I think it's really nice for, you know, and, and I was uh, just an audience member for a really long time before I was on the podcast. It's nice to be able to get those feelings of, like depth into these people, into these characters and why these things are so fucked up when they happen to them and, and be able to see them as really fully developed characters is a really cool thing. So uh, well, really excited for Roz's arc. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, I, I don't know if this was intentional, but uh, I think that the reason why we can do a whole arc on a character um, or, you know, specifically a whole episode like 28 is definitely you know Ven's episode and the idea that we could do it and still keep people it, people interested is because we've spent so much time already with Ven and people right. I know I know I am emotion not only am I emotionally connected to my own character but I'm also emotionally connected to all of your characters just because the amount of time I've been able to spend with them so yeah. Every, every second that you are speaking about Ven's backstory and what's going on with him and stuff like that, I'm interested mm -hmm. as, as just a listener because I, you know, one, it's interesting. It's super cool. There's so much depth into it, but also I care about Ven and our scene as two separate characters. So uh, I, I think that that's, I, I think that if you crafted it that way on purpose, well done. If not, then it is a happy coincidence because, you know, it, yeah. it, it, it worked really well. Well, one, one of my favorite parts of episode 28 was you fanboying after <laughs> yeah. Bucky and I had the chat because it was it was like kind of hearing an audience member, but you being so excited about our own podcast and our own <laughs> so it was just refreshing as hell. Um, <laughs> so uh, that it was just really nice to hear, man. 100% genuine. I was freaking out. Literally every second, you, the entire time you were talking, I was like this. <laughs> Yeah, like I think all of us were 
<laughs> uh, as yep. as uh, our one of our coworkers put it was it was thirty minutes of Josh and Bucky doing their own thing and then five to ten minutes of Nick just fangirling <laughs> <laughs> and like forcibly recapping what you just yeah, heard. It was, yeah. it was like, it's a pretty good recap of what the episode like, oh, oh, was. It was no, yeah. Josh Wait, and Bucky doing no, a thing and then Nick this. just being like, "Oh my god." <laughs> I just, I kind of wish that we had fate like recording of our faces during that because we went through some epic face journeys of like, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh, that was a good one. Um, now we're going to switch over to the questions. Questions! It's that time. Dang. And we're going to start with one very important one because it's so relevant to what's happening. Mm-hmm. Can I quickly say hi, Kit, and hi, Polish? They popped into the chat. Hey, guys. Hey. Hi. Hi. Polish, what up? Polish said he thought he'd buzz by for a few minutes. Ah. <laughs> ah. There's no cult. There's no it's cult. It's a cult. It's a goddamn There's cult. no cult, Josh. We're all aware of that. Anyway, <laughs> so this question, which is so relevant, comes from Lilf on Discord. I hope I pronounced that right, because I definitely it's did it Lilf. wrong last yes. time. Yes. Uh, so it's actually three questions that we're going to ask really fast, and then Bucky's going to answer all of them. Okay. <laughs> Was the merge always planned? How much was Bucky's original backstory and how much was Josh's idea? And would you have done a similar thing in a game that wasn't being recorded? First question, no. Um, <laughs> second question. Uh, most of it was my backstory. Yes, there was very few things I added or changed. Dots Kiln as the name was different. Um, your mother being part of our our scene was not part of your backstory. Nope, that was not. Uh, same with Argon Vost. I changed that mm-hmm. because I wanted to give you something really fresh in there that you didn't know was in your own backstory. Yeah. Because uh, it's something you wouldn't have known. So you writing in your backstory would have been weird because Ben would yeah. not have known that. Um, yeah. And also her, uh, even like her being in Barovia was not in your backstory because you decided that on episode one. Yeah. So her going through the Amber Temple and creating that soul book and stuff that was not part of your backstory but you did have three books and one of them we right. just figured out was the soul book yeah i um, intentionally wrote your... uh, i intentionally wrote in my backstory like i left a lot of things open ended purposefully for josh because since i also dm i understand like kind of the idea of like how a DM functions and like when they're going through a story, like they're looking for points, they're looking for plot points, they're looking for things that they can latch onto to be like, I could take that and I can take that, twist it and do something with that. I can take this and I can twist it a little bit and make it a little different or like give a surprise here and there that like something they don't understand. So I intentionally wrote a lot of things that were just like, oh, I never, I met my mom once, but she's kind of a mystery. And like my grandmother had this crazy past and, I didn't really know about it other than stories and things. So like allowing Josh to put his creative input into it to be like, here's some stuff that you wouldn't necessarily know about. And I'm going to throw into your story to surprise you because that's most of the fun is being like, Hey, I have the story. What can you do to my story to make it more interesting? (laughs) Which I mean, your backstory was, as we've said a lot of times, it was uh, elaborate and extensive and there was a lot of details to pull out. So when I was reading through, I was keeping mental note of like, let's take that. Let's run with that. You wrote something else of, um, I don't even think we got into it at all, but I saw that. I'm like, maybe I'll just change that and put it somewhere else. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was nice to have so much content to work with. And then I talked to you also, and uh, this is also a very good advice for a DM thing of if you're going to change your player's backstory, check with them first to see if they're okay with it. Not everybody would be okay with that kind of a, a mess around yeah. because it's, it's their writing it's their character. If you're changing a fundamental element of their character and not telling them that's a bit messed up. Yeah. So make sure if you do that, have that open communication. Right. Um, but to go to your first point, um, sorry, the first part of that question, yeah. it wasn't always planned, but we did plan on it beforehand. That's why you're right. out of character. We, yeah. Yeah. We didn't, uh, plan when we first started this game, it was not planned. It was there was no like discussion of them merging together. I was going to play the character, and it was going to be that was the way it was going to be. It eventually got to a point where uh, this was just a me personal thing, and I had a heart to heart with Josh. Um, I personally felt that the class I was playing, the Pendragon class, and the version of the Pendragon class I was playing, uh, wasn't fun and entertaining to me. 
It had nothing to do with the character. I enjoyed Ven as a character. I enjoyed our scene and I enjoyed that whole thing. It was just like the class and how it worked how it functioned i wasn't really a fan of so me and josh kind of had a uh, sit down talk for a while we like went over a couple things and eventually we were like hey what if we switched it to the other version of the pen dragon which seems to be more like fighter based um and uh, if you ever actually go through the pen dragon class itself on uh reddit or wherever you may find it uh there's two different versions of the of the uh class there's two different archetypes which is the dragon uh, bound, which is the one that I was playing initially where I had the pet, where you get a pet dragon. And then there's the dragon soul, where over time you slowly begin to develop into a dragon of sorts. And I was like, maybe it would be interesting if we did that. And then we talked about, well, what are we going to do with our scene? If that, if you're going to make this switch, what are we going to do with our scene? And we're like, well, what if maybe they merged together and became one being? And then I would that would allow me to essentially change a lot of the stats and like do something different. So it was a lot of going back and forth and like trying to figure this whole thing out. And funny enough, there was a idea that obviously is not going to happen now that I initially had um, was a backup plan for if Ven ever died. Right. right, uh, right this right. was going to be essentially how I was going to transform into the other version because I wanted to play the other archetype. Uh, we had this conversation, which essentially was going to be if Ven died, because at any given moment, anything can happen, and that's the way it is, uh, what was going to happen was the power within the heart was going to basically expel and open a rift that would suck our scene in and would drop a little tiny gem that would just sit there. And I would hope that you guys would bring it with you, and eventually that gem would have hatched, and I would have played our scene, just our scene. Awesome. And in the, so body cool. of, in the body of Ven. That's like a... Yep. But, uh, but we yeah. didn't have to go that route. You also didn't know that the merge was coming uh, no. in this arc. You just knew it was going to happen at some point. Yeah. Um, so as, as much as some people say, like, don't script your games and stuff, this was not scripted. This was a character, uh, sorry, player and DM decision yeah. because a player was unhappy with what they were playing. We found a workaround, um, and I kept a lot, it, like, kind of mysterious or when it was going to happen but we knew it was going to happen, just didn't know when. Right. That's also, that's also a good thing about playing, I mean, granted, I have limited experience, but playing a longer game over multiple sessions is that you could really talk to your fellow players and figure out, hey, the, you know, I, this is where my character's at right now. I, you know, I'm, I'm loving playing this character, but this aspect of my character, I'm not really that fond of, or, you know, oh, I, I thought I'd like it, but I, I'm not really enjoying it as much. And we get to work. I mean, guys, I go into, I go into your office all the time and I'm just like, what do you think about this idea? And you're like, how about you change it to this? And <laughs> let's see, let's see if Josh will roll with it, you know, um, which, which is great. I feel like communication amongst players, uh, could be greatly beneficial. Uh, I, I, I think Kent's, I think most of our characters have developed to where we enjoy playing them because we've talked about those characters with each other. Multi frequently, we talk about our characters all yeah. the time. Yeah. Uh, so to move on to the next question, to answer the last bit of it, would you have done something similar in a game that wasn't recorded? Absolutely. I love doing stuff like this and I love doing like big, like drastic changes. And even if it wasn't being recorded, we would probably be playing a game in a very similar fashion to how we're yes. doing it for the podcast. Oh, yeah. It wouldn't be any different at all. No, the, for, the only I difference is I think that would... Sorry, Nick, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I forget. I'm, I'm, I forget we're recording this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all the time. I set the mic up and I'm just like, oh, well, you yeah. know, whatever. And I, I know you do that because you sometimes will be like, I do it like this. <laughs> and it's so very like, physical. We have a yeah. podcast. It's over <laughs> audio. They can't <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and the amount of things they could cut out because they just don't carry over on an audio form mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah well the only things that i think would be different would be um i would not worry as much about uh player death or tpks because if it's a non-recorded game i don't need to worry about a story just coming to a close it's just be okay that was that yeah. let's move on to the next one so i'm a little bit more conscious of that to specify i really don't pull punches too much because I still want it to be a believable thing. Um, but I wouldn't worry as much. I would also like, I tend to slightly railroad you guys into certain directions because we are already planning arcs. 
Um, I don't fully railroad because if you guys say you want to go somewhere else, you go somewhere else. But I need to guide it because we are doing a podcast. It is something people need to keep track of yeah. and, you know, do the story. And it needs to come off that way. So I will slightly guide it more this way than I would if it was not being recorded. That's really the only differences. Uh, how you guys play the characters and the overall you know, story itself, I think that would be the same. Yeah. 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 We know you're not a. We're, we know you're not opposed to killing an animal in order to save the rest of the party. So don't know what you're talking about. I think he just likes killing animals. Also, don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, how about this? This is also a question that has to be asked. This from Pinky Chew on Discord. Uh huh. Who's everyone's favorite dream daddy? I knew that was the next question. <laughs> I don't know what dream daddy is. Okay, like, Nick. First off, game. you would love this game. Okay. Okay. Give me a brief synopsis. Oh, we've explained right. this to me. I know. I know. I, I want to one. explain it. Yes. You play as a a single dad who is prone to puns, whose daughter is going off to college. You guys move to a town that is full of other single hot dads, and you have to choose. You date around to pick which hot dad you're gonna stay with. Yeah. Have yeah. you ever played Dream Daddy? No. <laughs> <laughs> it is fucking delightful. It's done by the game Grumps guys. It the art is beautiful. It is a joy and delight. It's, now I feel like it's about finding your 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 best friend daddy. The your official daddy. taking initiative response should be it's Josh. Our Josh. I, I don't I yeah. don't agree to that. Because mine is Robert. Come on, everyone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hold on, let me do some research. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, too, yeah. but I do accept myself um, because I'm the only dad on the podcast. I hope you accept yourself because it's important to love yourself, Josh, and know who you are. I, I dated Josh as my best. I dated Matt yeah. first, and then I did Robert, and it was nice. It was, it was nice. It was nice. It was I've never fun. played Dream Daddy. I don't know any of the dads, but I did see on Instagram the other day, uh, Chris Hemsworth's Instagram, and he had uh, he was playing with his kids, and he seems like he'd be a really good dad. He seems like he is. Oh a yeah. Kid, so. Oh yeah. I'm not He's my Dream Daddy. I don't want to judge a book by its cover, but Damien looks kind of like Bucky, and Brian looks <laughs> like, <laughs> and Brian kind of looks like Drew, oh, and man. like Craig I'm, is kind of cute. Yeah, <laughs> Craig is cute. Damien. Joseph looks like... Like he's going to murder you. Yeah, yeah. Joseph does look yeah. like he's like, got some bodies in the basement. This guy looks he, like fucking Strahd. He looks like somebody <laughs> yeah. who he's like... He's a vampire, man. He's like super attractive, but yet secretly murders people. Like, yeah. you know. Yeah. Like he lures you in like a vampire. Like, you know, you're like, uh, looking at him, you're like oh. oh, okay. There he is in a normal outfit. That's not a Dracula outfit. Yeah, I, get, I can see it now. <laughs> It'd be Matt, Matt for me if I had to choose. So there you go. All, All right. right, there we go. Well, now I got to download this Morgan, game. You, is it an app? Yeah, you did name. Uh, it's uh, on Steam. I don't actually know what other things. It's on. fifteen dollars. Yeah. It was fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Nick is like no, we got we got a wedding to plan. That's <laughs> <not enough. laughs> do. Nick, you and I will will set up a date. Yes, please. And I, I will just play. let you play on my computer. Perfect. Thank Teamwork you. makes the dream work. The we'll dream daddy work. work. All, right, all right. I'm gonna ask uh one more question and then make all of you ask a question. Um this one comes from Thirsty on Discord. What game have you been looking forward to playing forever, but you haven't gotten around to? Does it have to be D and D ish? Uh, I mean, it just says game, so knock yourself out. Mm -hmm. hmm. What's well, a game that you want to play? Um, okay, so I should confess that I haven't. I have my roommates have updated co consoles, so like my roommate has a PS4, but like I personally. I've been chugging along on the same Xbox 360 for a very long time because mama's real fucking poor. Um, but I would love to play like the Breath of the Wild game because it's, so it's so pretty. It's so pretty. 
Um, and I'm not technically, I know this is sacrilege, but I'm not really a Zelda person because I didn't grow up on it. I'm I've sorry. never, I've never played Zelda. This is my first Zelda game. That's yeah. Okay. And it just, it looks really beautiful. Ocarina. And I've seen people play Wind Waker and that's really beautiful too. And I know Ocarina of Time is a big thing, but I just, I've never really gotten into it, but it looks so beautiful that I wanted, I would want to play it. The like tabletop game that I have played before and want to play again, because it's like the nicest five hours of my life was a game called Empire Builder, which is like if you took Settlers of Catan and take it to ride and blended them together to have a super chill board game baby, <laughs> that is Empire Builder. It's fucking delightful. Uh, there's three uh, RPGs I've been wanting to play. Uh, Deadlands, Paranoia, and Mistborn. I've been wanting to play all of those for so long and I'm waiting on Drew to read the rule books and get a game together because I am going to immediately sit down and have the most eager face ever well, if we play any of those games. I've started reading Mistborn, so... So excited for that. Uh, video game-wise, I did recently just pick up Nier Automata. I haven't played it yet because I also bought Overwatch and Monster Hunter World. So I've been very busy video game-wise. <laughs> <laughs> um... uh, Oh, sorry, Josh, you go first. Oh, okay. Because I'm well, always I'm always jumping in. And I'm rude as hell. I apologize. <laughs> we all do it. Um, so I don't really have much time to play much anymore. But in the limited time that I have, I hopped back into Skyrim. Uh, so I'm just chilling in there and Minecraft for a bit. Um, so I'm kind of going back into the older games. And the reason for that is since I don't have a lot of time dipping into a whole new game, it's it seems like a very big endeavor. Um, but if I could, what I would want to do is Breath of the Wild, uh, for sure. John, you got me uh, Divinity Original Sin 2, which I, I would love to dip into. Um, I think those are the two main ones. And also Beamdog is coming out with Neverwinter Nights nice Enhanced Edition. So that would definitely be on the docket. Um, but tabletop-wise, um, I've been really, really wanting to play uh, Masks again. Uh, yeah, or another like powered by the apocalypse system. Uh, I think that would be a lot of fun. Uh, there was also a board game. Uh, all all the board games you've been mentioning, Morgan, I've been uh, interested in. So Red Dragon Inn, Red uh, Dragon Space, Inn. Team, Space Team, Empire team. Builder, Empire Builder. Three great yeah. games you should play with your friends. Which we just played uh, Sheriff of uh, Nottingham at the uh, at the Uncommons the other day, which that was a lot of fun. That was good. Um, but yeah, those are the games I'm kind of I, I would play. But right now, Skyrim doing some Dark Brotherhood and, and thief stuff is. Uh, uh, Bardic Martin says time. play Divinity Two with Arch and him. I will join you. <laughs> oh, All four man, of us, I've, let's go. Uh, let's do it. We'll figure it out. Hi guys. <laughs> Drew, uh, what, by the way, um, those uh, those two guys are from the Lucky Die, also on the network. Um, they are friends. Cool. Them. Yes. Uh, Nick, go ahead. Um, Grand Theft Auto, the most recent one, has been sitting on my shelf uh, since it came out. Haven't played it. Uh, and I honestly, it's more just like my Everest. It's so long and so big that it's mm. just, I will eventually beat it. Uh, other than that, mm, I'm going to say <laughs> mm, <laughs> Oregon Trail. That'd be cool. That would, that would be a good one. And also Monopoly. If anyone wants to play me in Monopoly, I'm the best. I will beat all of you. That has given me absolutely no incentive to play you in Monopoly. That face has put I'm me not, on playing I'm not Monopoly really, I'm not really forever. good. You got I'm, too intense there for a I'm, second, Nico. <laughs> I, want, I, want, I want you to know I'm not good, but I, I, I will play anybody in Monopoly at any time. Let's do this. Or at risk. At any risk. time? At any time. Okay. And look at look at how fate look at how intense those eyes so, are. Yeah. So I'll take your Monopoly. money. I'll take your money. <laughs> and I don't want to be presumptuous, but like I'm personally just really looking forward to finishing Strahd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and good moving point. on to the next game. Yeah, that, yeah. Would, that would be nice, wouldn't it? I'm over this emo bullshit. <laughs> well, uh, peek, peek behind the curtain because this doesn't affect anything. Uh, everyone knows that we've been kind of ahead with episodes. Uh, so tomorrow we start dipping into the real meat of the last arc. It's the final count. So uh, we'll see how much longer this actually goes. Uh, That's beautiful. Um, but for us, we'll, we're almost done. Drew, do you have any games? I don't, honestly. I've been sitting here thinking about it. I've got nothing. 
Didn't you, aren't uh, you playing masks? Yeah, but I, I he has masks. been playing and masks. The, but the the question was, what game have, do you want to play that you haven't been able to? And I no, like Drew is someone was who was like, oh, I want this. You bought. haven't been able to play Red Dragon Inn, and you bought it, so you Drew, will be able to do that. He doesn't. And wait. Space Team he does it. And I, Space Team. I don't wait. I do things that I want when I want to do them, which okay, sounds really it. selfish, but. It, it's not in okay. that way. <laughs> since, since you don't have an answer to that question, can I take the next question that's directed to you? Do you want to ask it or do you want to answer yeah, it? Yeah, ask it. No, no, no. Do I it. want to ask it. Oh, okay, it. go for it. Um, this it. is from Fat Cat on Twitter. Oh, and basically, one this, uh, this one's for Drew. What did you mean when you said that you're a weirdo, but you regret hearing <laughs> that I was seen the coldest lick ever? <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of weirdo are you? Am I going to regret asking this question? And has like a presumptuous face, like <laughs> short answer, yes. yes. I want you yes. honest. Wow. To, I want your honest wow. answer. What kind of weirdo are you? Wow. Well, I like that. I got judgy, I like I got kink shaving, this. judgy faces from everyone on the top row. <laughs> you tried to kink shame me earlier before this hey, went on, so I'm going. Kink shaving is my kink. <laughs> Nobody it's else terrifying. has to answer this question. It's just true. It's just true. Uh, what kind well, of weirdo are you? Uh, Let's just say there's a lot of kinks that are really fun to play with. <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. So <laughs> you'll probably you. regret that. I'm not going to get more into that because this is available publicly. This is a family-friendly podcast. Exactly. There is are it? children everywhere. I don't know if Fat Cat's going to be happy with if that you, answer, but if, I personally... If you want to see how weird... If you want to see how weird, hop in the Discord and see the questions that come out almost every day. Those aren't <laughs> even that weird. Those are, the those are pretty ones. tame. The beginning ones... Yeah. The uh, second I looked at that question, I was like, I need to ask you. Those are pretty tame there, Josh. You need to. I, I know. It's a slight dip into the pool. It's a fascination with bees. Let me, let me tell you, I will talk about a lot of things privately, but on Mostly a publicly bees. available thing. No, sorry. You just got to be satisfied with what I asked you, what I answered there. <laughs> Drew's like, you got to take me out to dinner? No, you just, just, just slide into my DMs. <laughs> and I will answer you. All right. Um, the next question. Yeah, someone else ask. Oh. We got we got a little bit of time. Uh, uh, I'll do one. Go for it. What is everyone's favorite booze snack combo when sitting down to play a game? Good question. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go around against three. You want to start? Uh, sure. Um, usually, if I'm going to be drinking while I play a game, it's going to be whiskey. And for snacks, I try to avoid snacks because nobody wants to hear you eat on mic. Chips on mic. Chips on mic. Chips on mic. Uh, but if I am going to snack. Oh, it's going to be something salty and delicious, like a pretzel. Uh, John? Uh, I also am a fan of whiskey, but if I'm not feeling uh, down for something heavy, I'll usually go with a nice gin and tonic. Uh, nice and refreshing. Uh, as far as snacks go, um, I mean, any kind of chips, really. Like, I like Doritos. I like barbecue chips. I like... Uh, it's like these little chipotle nacho chips that are at the deli right around the corner from us that I really like to get, and those are super good. Nick? Um, my favorite drink of choice is a margarita. Margarita. Uh, margarita. But we play for very long sessions, so usually it it delves into like a Red Bull vodka. Just so <laughs> yeah, like, usually just usually like, we start out at about like a nice fruity drink, and then yeah. as we delve deeper into it, like, so we're like, we just turn, like great we shots directly into Jessica Jones. We're just like, <laughs> My go-to uh, snack would probably be just like OG flavored Doritos. That's that's my go-to. That was one thing, Nick, that I didn't know about you was I didn't know you drank during every game. I just thought it was you. Is it rude to say that I drink heavily? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think that's rude. That's you talking about yourself. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I have a lot of... Um, Granted, I, I forget that we are recording. However, uh, it is a lot of talking, and and I'm very comfortable with you guys. However, I have a lot of social anxiety, so the alcohol kind of just like helps me not worry about that as much. Sometimes so. it's just we get so I think we all get caught up in what's happening that we're like I have a tendency. So normally my mic, uh, my setup is not great, which you guys can sometimes hear on our audio, even though Josh and Bucky do an amazing job editing. I make a pillow fort out of my pillows and like literally set it up so that I've got my mic sort of set in the little pillow hut. And then I have to like lean over to the side and be like, Hey, uh, so this is what I'm doing. And then when I'm really into something, I'm like in the camera and I'm like, Hey, I've got things that I want to do. And the mic is all the way over here. <laughs> so like, I forget as well. 
Um, it's like there's a level of intensity sometimes that we forget. Um, what was I saying? Drinks, drinks and snacks for drinks. you, Morgan. I, um, I'm not a very big drinker. Uh, if I am going to be drinking, it's usually like a hard cider. I get the big bottles, the big individual bottles of Stella, which I think I knocked over one in, yep. in episode. <laughs> Oops. episode 27. You did. You did. Yep. Yeah. That's and when knocked, you rolled your natural one. Natural one. I knocked over my beer. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, I don't drink very much. Um, I am a sugar hound though. So usually when it comes to snacks, I will, I will go for sugar. Mm. Um, deepest apologies to Bucky because at one point I like <laughs> ate ice cream on Mike and I was like three bites into it. And I was like, Oh, this probably sounds disgusting. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I've heard plenty Wet of bodily noises um, from all of you guys that I don't on. want I to I actually hear. want to get into that real fast, but when Morgan's done. I just want to say, though, for a snack recommendation, Trader Joe's right now has, like, white truffle and sea salt potato chips. Say they're what? very good. Nice. They're, like... They're, yeah, they're really, really good. Uh, and one thing I was going to say real fast before Josh answers is that it's become a weird, it's become something of, I don't know, just to annoy each other. Every time I'm, when I'm editing something and I find knuckle cracking sounds or burps, I'm just like, here you go, Bucky. Just listen, <laughs> just listen directly to that. Here's a montage and of I it. Just oh, export, I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of it too. Yeah, I, know I just export I noises. I know I'm I like, here you go. <laughs> Also, so like you guys idea. sometimes isolate audio clips of just of stupid shit I say without any context. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I have to save some of those. That just so put many them, like, of them are good. Long uh, thing. I wish they were at the end of every episode. Okay, Josh, yeah, what is your favorite booze and snack combo? Uh, for me, when I drink, I do normally one of three options. Uh, one, I will do coffee uh, because as a DM, I need to make sure that I'm on my, my game. Um, sometimes though, I will go into a Jack and Coke, but I will not drink heavily again, because if I'm DMing, I need to be on it, mm -hmm. but I will do that for a very similar reason that Nick does is to loosen myself up a little bit. If I know a lot of role playing is going to be happening because I want to be able to dive into characters a little harder than I normally would and not be as self-conscious. Yeah. Uh, but the third thing I'll do is like a middle ground. I usually do uh, ginger ale which is pretty good for my throat. So that way with all the talking I'm doing, I'm not going to like blow out my voice. So nice. that's usually that with snacking. I don't do a lot either. Uh, one, because I'm talking so goddamn much. That I don't tend to snack very often. And two, as an editor, I understand that I don't want to hear all that shit. So, mm -hmm. uh, but if I do, I normally mute the mic and I'll have like a string cheese or something. Nice. That's that. Also that question was from Polish sugar. There, okay. oh. I was actually questioning if anyone said that. My homie. Uh, anyone have a question they want to ask real fast? Are there anyone, any on there that seem like a quick? Did anybody else uh, ask a question? Um, I did not ask a question, but this one will be for Drew. For a quick one. Uh, this is from Fat Cat again. Uh, did you decide to kill Mikhail Pots and Pans guy because you couldn't pick a voice for him? Uh, and <laughs> how much of that choice was story driven versus how much of it was Drew driven? Uh, I decided to kill him because it was story driven sort of uh it was not because i couldn't find the voice because i think we as we can all agree i settled on an amazing voice for mikhail uh and it's, yeah yes Duh. it's the best voice out of all voices for the rest of the time um but i it was story driven because i felt that we weren't going to get out of there and if it was drew driven kent would have died in the ninth episode <laughs> instead of me um, oh my god, another multiverse. <laughs> There's a parallel listen, world. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've told you that my initial instinct was kill Kit on the altar. <laughs> it's okay. Um, if you would have killed me, there would have been revealed that Kent had a twin brother named Brent. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or oh, oh no, we've got we've got to end stuff. Anyway, um, I also feel like I wish that I had been with these guys in the very beginning because I tend to play like paladin -y good very like let's look at all the sides before we uh, yeah okay but can we can we talk about impulse decisions the like, impulse was that everyone would die or one person would die or we consider that it's a giant murder house and maybe one person dying would trigger more death i don't know there are just thoughts that I could have happened i had no idea it was a murder house and no one else did because up until you then, had been there the entire up until time. that point nothing 
particularly bad. It was them. chanting about death. Houses tend not to chant. Okay, the house didn't chant. It was some ghosts that were chanting. <laughs> True. Behold my face. Do we have time for one more question? Can we fit it in? If you got a really, really quick one. Really quick, really fast. Who else didn't ask a question? Oh, I you, didn't. Nick, go. No, uh, no, no, I, I asked a question, but uh, da, 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 Morgan, da. ask one. It's your what is our favorite our... season treat? Yeah, that I was gonna say that favorite yeah. treat okay. uh, in Barovia, probably whatever she could find. Mm -hmm. I would assume like small little rodents and like tiny things that she could just num num. It's Scooby yeah. snacks and sandwiches. That was from Pinky Chew, by the way. Our scene snacks. That was from Pinky Chew our on scene. Discord. Draco mm -hmm. snacks. Draco snacks. Yeah. Draco snacks. <laughs> Oh. I do have a feeling, though, that Ven is the kind of, like, dragon and pet owner to be, like, so Arsene can't eat junk food. Meanwhile, like, Kent is, like, shoving donuts at her underneath yeah, the table. Yeah. Like, Every time he's out, like, Arsene, Arsene, like, Arsene has a very strict diet. She has to stick to it to maintain her shape, her form. She's she's just look fit. And, like, right behind him, Kent's just, like, donuts and this thing. And, and I don't even know what this is. And, like, like, later, later Ven's, like, like yes. she's gaining weight. I don't understand. I'm, like, the fun uncle that. that the kids go to visit and they have, they're finally allowed to have candy, and they're just like, "Yes, yeah, so do it. candy." All right. I just have a good image of our scene, like doing the honey pot thing that, like, like Winnie the Pooh would do. Yeah. Just in the side yeah. of chocolate, just getting caught, mm -hmm. like, uh, <laughs> the dog oh, in an we'll Easter basket. <laughs> Sounds about right. Uh, but it is eleven o'clock, and that is our time. Uh, does anyone Boop have anything they want to plug real fast? Uh, I mean, yes, actually, we're all uh, doing stuff, but upcoming events. <laughs> Yes, there'll be details uh, about it shortly because Zach and I are still trying to work it out. But Zach Valenti uh, has a self-care Sunday stream that he does on Sundays. I will be on that with him this upcoming Sunday, either in person or online. We don't know yet. Uh, but that'll probably be around 2, 2.30. Keep in mind, it's also daylight savings time this weekend. So keep 2, 2.30 uh, what? PM Eastern mm -hmm. on Sunday. Um, so that'll be happening um i believe oh uh the show i work on uh one of the shows i work on happened leonard uh it just aired season three this past Ooh. wednesday so that yeah. is currently going if you want to catch previous seasons i believe they're on netflix uh but i was the online editor for that so you'll get to see the work that i've done uh on that show uh blue really bloods good. is still going on as well uh, that's the other show that i work on i think that's it for me uh, my plugs are that, guys, it's starting to become primary season for our elections. So it's a very good time right now to make sure that you are registered to vote, that you, if you need to update your address or change your party, that was a very good time to do it. You can do it at DMV. You can also, a lot of local campaigns are kicking up in your area uh, for state assembly, for state senator, for city council, not city council, um, but congressional stuff. You can get a voter registration form and you can send that in bing bang boom and you're all set to go um so just a gentle reminder that local elections and your midterm elections for your representatives are really important and you should get involved all right bucky um i will be on twitch again on monday uh over on nerd Aversion's twitch stream playing princes of the apocalypse and i will be i am always playing this handsome devil of a character Ooh. Wait, sc uh, scoot it over to your right a little bit. There you go. Now you're on. Now he's on screen. Now there it is. Screen. There you go. Wee. There it is. This this handsome gentleman. As a reminder, um, we love fan art too, and we, yes. we've oh, enjoyed yeah. the ones we've gotten. So thank you, everyone we who's done that. Art. And I thank love you. this one that Polish ogre <laughs> no kit wanted. One of sorry, I can't read the whole chat while I'm sitting here talking. <laughs> it was one of those who suggested this, and I want to see it. Someone please read the chat and do it. Um, but yeah, if you want to catch, I'll be over there at uh, on Nerd Emotions Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. other side of the country time, um, Pacific. That's it. And uh, yeah, that's it. On? Of um, I don't even remember. Okay, We're wow. way into there. <laughs> way <laughs> I, into I don't keep track of what episode. I just show up and play. <laughs> Fair. That's, right. that's, uh, my, that's my. my. That's how I do things. All right, Nicholas. Anything to plug? Uh, want to plug my friendship? Uh, you could find <laughs> it on social media. Just shoot, shoot me a DM. Uh, I'm very, very open. You could just text me or call. You know, I, I live, I live, I live on the East Coast. So if you're nearby, like, come on over, hang out. We'll have dinner. You know, 
I would also okay. like to Unsolved plug mysteries. social media. If you want to find the cutest shit in your life, just go to Nick's Instagram and just, just so I personally was at a lunch table and was like, ugh, they're too <laughs> cute. Yes, yes. Um, I just, uh, I just proposed to my girlfriend now fiance uh, two months ago and we are currently planning a wedding. We are in love. Yes, we are this is the only flag I have on my desk, but it's, okay. it's, it's a right. heterosex- heterosexual. <laughs> it's Sean Connery, heterosexual. Sean Connery. Yeah. Yep. So if you're if you're into that whole thing, otherwise, yeah. just reach out. We can talk about comic book stuff, uh, nerd things. I'm totally down for it. Let's do it. E. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, and the only thing I have is keep an eye out on the news for us. The Twitch. Stream will be We're gonna be up. on the news. No, not that, not the real news, our news, <laughs> okay. inter podcast news. Uh, the Twitch stream will be picking up, um, starting with the Meanwhile series, which will likely start beginning of next month sometime. Still working on the exact time frame for that. Uh, and we're gonna start streaming various other games again next month sometime, kicking it off with. Something fun. I haven't decided what yet. It's going to be some weird game first. And to build off of that, um, meanwhile, episode three of The Beast, which Drew DM'd, uh, it just came out on our Patreon. So people who are Patreon subscribers for that level that can access that content, it is there for you. Uh, For those of you who are thinking about it or curious of who's in the game, Drew DM'd the game. And it features Bucky, Donna, and myself from Taking Initiative, along with Arch and Belanda from The Lucky Die, and Robert Segura from Nerds on a Roll. So to go off of that, uh, please support the other shows that are on the Spark Network, which is Nerds on a Roll, which you can find at Nerds on a Roll on Twitter, uh, or the Lucky Die podcast, which is at TLD Pod. Pod. Yep. yep. Yes. Yep. Um, both of them are amazing shows. Nerds on a Roll covers a masks-based game, which is a Powered by the Apocalypse system. And The Lucky Die is a homebrew 5U world. Um, both are fantastic. They're wonderful people. We just got to meet Belanda in person because she's uh, here from uh, overseas. So, uh, yeah, hop on over, support them. If you like our stuff, you'll probably like them because we wanted them to be a part of us. Yep. Uh, I think that's everything for us. Yep. That's it. All right. Uh, thanks for joining us, and we will we'll see back. you again next month. Yep. Tell your friends. Weeks. Yes, bring, bring friends next time. Bring friends. <laughs> Bye. So Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.